Thanks for joining us on Shannon's Club TV, where we look back on important cars on Australian roads and racetracks. In each episode, we reflect on the defining moments in our feature car's history and take a ride in an owner's example. We'll also get a market update from the Shannon's auctions team. Now in this episode, we recall the Australian version of General Motors' small car for the world, the Holden Gemini TX, TC and TD. The Holden Gemini could hardly have been more representative of its time. In mid-1975, it was the small car Holden needed to regain sales momentum. When compared with the HJ Holden and LH Tirana, the Gemini felt positively new age. At the time, the Gemini was one of four versions of General Motors' new world car known as the T-Car. Our Holden differed in only minor respects from the Isuzu Ballette Gemini, and it's the middle word here that indicates best the Gemini's place in Japanese automotive history. It was a replacement car for the admirable Ballette, one of the first oriental imports to achieve sales success in Australia, while reshaping our idea about the potential of small sedans. The TX Gemini set a new template for inexpensive small cars in Australia. Size-wise, it slotted between the Corolla and the Corona, and it had Corolla economy with Corona performance. And at the time, its rear drive configuration marked it as conventional. Mark, did the 1.6 litre engine in such a small car make the Gemini ideal for motorsport? Yeah, I think it had a lot of things going for it. You know, it had that lively little single overhead cam four cylinder engine. And it, I think it only weighed about 900 kilos. So like very that. good power to weight ratio. Plus it had other things going for it, you know, like uh, rack and pinion steering, uh, twin wishbone front suspension, a well-located live rear axle. It's interesting, the Holden dealer team, after they had to give up on the Tirana XU1, which was an enormously successful forest rally car, they saw the Gemini as the obvious replacement, but they tried you know, over several years to try and get that car competitive, and for whatever reason, it just wasn't able to repeat the XU1 success. That's interesting. Mm. The TX model was superseded by the TC in 1977. This was a minor facelift, but a front stabiliser bar and steel belted radials were made standard. But the 1978 TD got a bold new front with rectangular headlights. The biggest news though was RTS, which turned the already crisp handling Gemini into a regular little sports sedan or coupe. You could even pay extra for a five-speed gearbox. The uniquely Australian two-door wagons and panel van variants broadened the Gemini's appeal. SLE variants of sedan and coupe were introduced, but were soon replaced by the less expensive SLX. Unfortunately, ADR 27A took its toll, and a road test of a TD Gemini in the October 1978 edition of Wheels reported a standing 400 metre time of 19.4, down 0.8 of a second from the first model. The TX, with its brilliant handling, optional five-speed gearbox, and that lovely coupe body, was one of the standout, inexpensive, small cars of the day. Mark, did the Gemini prove a winner in circuit racing? Well, it did, but it took a few years and a few rule changes to allow it to do just that. Following its release in 1975, the 1.6 litre Holden Gemini was immediately thrust into racetrack duties, even though the bulk of its activities were in one make series in which its only competitor was itself. It all started when a group of Queensland Holden dealers supplied a dozen showroom stock Geminis to compete in a series of support races at the 1975 Australian Grand Prix meeting at Surface Paradise. In atrocious wet conditions, the 12 identical Geminis were driven by top open wheeler stars of the era, and the concept proved to be a real crowd pleaser. The success of the AGP initiative quickly evolved into a dedicated one-make series for Geminis being run at Melbourne's Calder Park, providing a low-cost entry into the sport. Several years later, another Gemini series kicked off in Queensland, providing an affordable but competitive training ground for future touring car stars, including Bathurst winner Tony Longhurst. 
John, those Gemini one-make series, I mean, I know it was the Gemini just competing against itself, but boy, they provided some very exciting racing. It was sort of like Formula Ford with doors and roofs. Well, I've always found one-make racing fantastic because mm -hmm. it really does. It doesn't eliminate the car as a variable, but it really puts the focus on the driver. It really does. Yeah. Remember the Renault 12? Yeah, the Renault 12 New Star Series, the, the TR7 Pro-Am yes, at Amory Park. Yes. I mean, there's been a lot of one-make series, and the interesting thing is that out of every series, usually, one or two drivers one or two who really emerged, yep, shine yep, through. They've gone yep. on. Yes. yes. Although popular with drivers and spectators, one mate racing was not providing the Gemini with a chance to measure its performance against relevant competition. The lack of a 1.6 litre class in the Australian Touring Car Championship and at Bathurst meant the Gemini was always outgunned by two litre contenders like Alpha's 2000 GTV and Ford's RS2000 Escort. However, that all changed in 1979 when Bathurst race organisers finally introduced a new class for cars up to 1600 cc's, which, not surprisingly, attracted a healthy entry of six Geminis, which were as merciless on their competition as Holden's V8 Tirana A9Xs were in the outright class. After the early retirement of an exotic twin cam Corolla Levin, the Geminis had the race all to themselves, filling the first four places with only one retirement. The breakthrough 1979 Bathurst class win for Gary Leggett and David Selden proved beyond question the speed and durability of the General's popular small car in Australia's greatest race. Remember, you can build your own virtual garage on the Shannon's Club website. My name is Les Dole. Uh, this is a 1976 Gemini Coupe and uh, in original condition. Automatic, four cylinder, three speed auto, Isuzu engine, just a standard as they come from factory. The condition of the vehicle was uh, completely standard when I got it and it still is today. Even down to the Holden mud flaps is still on the vehicle. Just a bit of cleaning and polishing, and uh, that's it. What I like most about the car is it's a two-door coupe. It's fairly rare these days, in good condition. You never see originality in these anymore, and uh, that's why I'm, I'm fairly passionate about it, and I just love driving it. I am a Shannon's customer and uh, I've insured the vehicle with Shannon's and all my other vehicles and, and house contents and, and property and uh, they've been very good to me. The car, my uncle bought it brand new in 1976. I used to service it and look after it for him and when he turned 80 years old he handed his license in and uh, I acquired the vehicle off. I've owned the vehicle roughly now about 12 years and to this day it's only got 49,000 kilometres on it. The future plans for the vehicle is to uh, just preserve it as it is and, uh, and look after it and enjoy it. Shannon's National Auctions Manager, Chris Borobon, joins us to talk about the TXTCTD Gemini. Welcome to the show, yeah, mate. Thanks, mate. Oh, Christoph, those early Geminis, mm. I can remember when they were in the traffic. Yes, yes. And I can't absolutely. tell you when I last saw one, so what's the story? <laughs> yeah, that was a long yeah. time ago, mm. that was. Look, I clearly remember them in the 80s, yeah. you know, growing <laughs> up, we... Um, we had them, you know, we modified them. Uh, they were the P-plate yeah. special. They were, they? the yeah. P-plate special. You know, they're the cars that we got into modified. The coupe was favoured and yep. had the look. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you were surfy, you had the panel van and, you know, you went camping in it. So, great and, story. And, and we mustn't forget that they were in a lot of one-make racing series. There was one at Calder, there was, just, there was yeah. one in Queensland. I mean, they were being raced everywhere. So, 
as a result of that and all the modifications that the kids did to them, I imagine there's not a lot of original. You're lucky to survive, uh, yeah. really. Yeah. 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 The survival rate, I think, on the original cars are fairly low today. Yeah. Um, mm. But again, it's, a, it's it's another car that was you know acceptable to be modified. Yeah. And mm. and it was cooler to have the coupe when they were new. I guess the same still applies now. I think so. I, I think the the coupe's always probably the preferred variant. Uh, mm. But you know the, the sedan's acceptable as well. And then you've obviously got the wagons and your panel van. So. And do these cars, you know, given their, their Isuzu DNA, if you like, is a Gemini accepted a, like a Japanese car show? Or it, 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 it's got one foot in the Australian, one foot in the... Yeah, yeah. How's it, how's it um, perceived by Japanese car enthusiasts? Because of that Isuzu bloodline. <sighs> It, I think it's it's got a part except uh, you know acceptance in 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 the scene. <laughs> it's difficult, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it mm. is difficult. Uh, but but I think it's still popular today with young enthusiasts. I think mm. we saw it probably uh, absent in the marketplace in the last you know ten years. But yeah. we've seen it come back again. I, you know, I just find in the last couple of years I'm seeing you know more Gemini's on the road. Well, I yeah. think people are starting to appreciate. I mean, they had great yeah. breeding. That beautiful little. You know, well, 1.6 litre overhead it, cam engine, the, the suspension, it, it was a it good showed up. It showed up the Tirana and the HJ Kingsfoot, something yeah. fearful, yeah. really, yeah. didn't it, in terms of complexity and technology yep. and, and finish, mm. build quality. And, of course, the TD was around when Holden switched over to radial tuned suspension. So if you could find a TD, you're getting, uh, I guess, the pick of that crop. Yes, yes. Uh, yep. so, so where would you find one? I mean, where, where do you look for one of these things now? Look, I think, you know, the classifieds, uh, you, you will find once in a while they'll pop up. Uh, so you don't even, see them at the auctions? No, right? not really, actually, no. Uh, mm. You know, we're not really getting too many calls on, on Gemini's. You'd probably welcome moment. You'd probably welcome one, wouldn't you? We, we'd welcome an early car, absolutely. You know, a mm. really nice original coupe. Nice I'd coupe, definitely eh? love mm. to see one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good stuff. Yeah. But the car clubs are probably the way to go. Okay. Uh, approach car clubs mm. and maybe even chat to a JDM scene. They might know where there's a few hiding. <laughs> yeah, they could do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Oh, Thanks, Chris. And remember, you can get up to date with all the latest Shannon's auctions information on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like your own image of the Gemini in competition, visit autopix.com.au. John, it's interesting looking back at that Holden Gemini, you know, GM's first world car. The idea of building one car and selling it in different editions around the world, different markets, it's a pretty bold initiative. It was. Yeah. The Gemini was the first, mm. the Commodore was the second, yep. and the Chimera was the third. Yeah. Now, we won't go into the second one, but let's just talk about the Chimera. Yeah. When the Gemini was launched in 1975, it was still conventional for small cars to have rear-wheel drive, yeah, like that's right. Corolla and mm. all those sorts of things. By yep. 1982, the world was changing. So here was the third, <laughs> General Motors, third world car. We got the Chimera. Mm. It was front-wheel drive, but it was nowhere near mm. the success. In fact, it was a failure. Mm. Whereas the Gemini was, was pretty good. It was pretty successful. When rear-wheel drive was conventional, it was a very straightforward very well executed car. Yeah, that's interesting though. I mean, I know they were changing from rear wheel drive to front wheel drive, but you think the lessons you learn taking on such a massive program like that with your first car, that you'd get better and better at it, but it doesn't always happen that way. It doesn't always happen. Yeah. No, it certainly doesn't. The Gemini, I think part of the reason for its success overall was because it was such a simple yeah. design. Yeah, yeah, you can't get yeah. it wrong. That's yeah. right. We hope you've enjoyed reflecting on the Australian edition of GM's first world car, the Holden Gemini, and we look forward to your company next time on Shannon's Club TV. Bye for now.